just hours, history will unfold in Miami. Former President Trump will be arraigned on federal charges. The crowds and security expected to intensify throughout the morning. FBI, Miami police, U.S. Marshals, everyone's monitoring. Now is my president. Now tomorrow and forever. And I defend him. Just ahead, a full report from Miami. To think about people over projects as you consider the budget. Cuts are coming in the Gross Point School District, including teacher layoffs. This morning, what we've learned about what else is on the chopping block. Plus, a controversial new Oxford School security plan is actually raising new concerns about student and staff safety. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 a.m. starts now. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Rhonda Walker. Thank you for waking up with us on this 13th day of June, although it's going to feel maybe a little more like April showers. Well, I was thinking about that. Uh, it was an abnormally hot stretch of May, so maybe it's an evening out process just for a second. Right, just because we got to somehow get back to the averages. Before we bounce <laughs> back, Ashley, before we bounce <laughs> back up somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been on a little bit of a roller coaster with these temperatures to say the least, but at least we have a couple more rain chances to help kind of chisel at this deficit that we've had with some drought conditions across Michigan. So today, Thursday, our best chance of seeing some more rain showers and there's just this little blip going into Sunday, but I think Father's Day is looking dry now, just getting a little bit of the cloud cover. So let's go ahead and take a live look at downtown Detroit. 50 degrees under cloudy skies and winds have shifted out of the south, not really ushering in warmer air for today, but that's where the moisture is coming from as we will be on the back edge of this low pressure system. So 50 degrees right now in Pontiac Metro Airport, 52 at City Airport, 51 down in Monroe and 54 in Gross Seal. Otherwise, most of us in the outlying areas in the mid to upper 40s to start your Tuesday morning. That puts us anywhere from the exact same temperature yesterday to even eight degrees cooler in Lapeer, nine degrees cooler in Port Huron. So as we look at the map here, we do have this moisture wrapping off from the west, pushing into our area. We'll time out when these rain showers will be in your neighborhood in just a moment. In just a few hours now, history will unfold in Miami. Former President Donald Trump expected to surrender to federal agents. It will take him the first former, make him the first former president to face federal criminal charges. An indictment from the Department of Justice alleges that the former president took classified government documents at the end of his presidency. And NBC's Jay Gray beginning our coverage from outside the federal courthouse in Miami. Good morning, and the indictment alleges that former President Donald Trump violated the Espionage Act, hiding away some of our nation's most guarded secrets, many of the documents dealing with national security. The former president repeatedly denying any wrongdoing and saying he'll plead not guilty later this morning here. Police, federal agents, and protesters have been in Miami for days. Now is my president. Now, tomorrow, and forever. And I defend him. The crowd and security expected to intensify outside the federal courthouse over the next several hours, where former President Donald Trump is expected to voluntarily surrender to prosecutors. The FBI, Miami police, U.S. Marshals, everyone's monitoring. He'll likely enter the courthouse through an underground tunnel and will be processed by both federal marshals and the FBI. Once inside the courtroom, the former president will enter a plea on 37 counts from seven separate charges, including obstruction of justice, destruction or falsification of records, conspiracy and false statements. We have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Images released by the Department of Justice show boxes of classified documents scattered throughout Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. The former president says he's done nothing wrong, labeling the indictment the boxes hoax. The ridiculous and baseless indictment of me by the Biden administration's weaponized Department of Injustice will go down as among the most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. Advisors to Mr. Trump say they don't expect him to take any kind of plea deal in the case. The special counsel says he'll request a speedy trial. 
Miami police on high alert this morning and say they're prepared for crowds of five to 50,000 from both sides of this controversial case to gather throughout the day here. Jay Gray, NBC News, Miami. Fighting fire with even more firepower, the Oxford School Board considering a new security plan that includes buying gun safes. Let's bring in Priya Mann with more on this. And Priya, there's been a lot of pushback on this idea. Many just don't think it will actually make it safer. Yeah, there's a lot of opinions on this. Rhonda and Jason, good morning. This biometric gun safe comes with enhanced security features, and the manufacturer says four school districts in Oakland County already have them. Now Oxford is considering it as well. You have been identified. The Oxford School Board is considering putting biometric gun safes in schools. The safe in question is made in Brighton by 360 Life Safety. At a school board meeting in May, we learned more about the biometric gun safe. In an active shooter situation, semi-automatic rifles such as an AR-15 could be more useful in stopping a shooter than a standard sidearm. This safe eliminates using codes for access and requires no fine motor skills. Unauthorized access is therefore eliminated. Like a smartphone, a camera performs an optic scan on the person trying to open the safe and only allows those permitted to open it. A weapons vault is not in the best interest of the students. Some parents and community members oppose the move and plan to speak out tonight. There is no evidence that hardening our schools in this way makes schools safer. The answer to guns is simply not more guns. And that school board meeting is tonight at 6.30 at Oxford Middle School, and we will be there. Reporting live this morning, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, thank you. Two students hurt in the campus shooting at Michigan State are beginning the process of suing the university. According to court notices filed Friday, the students are claiming easy access to campus buildings and a failure to improve security created a dangerous risk for students and staff. On the evening of February 13th, a gunman fired shots inside Berkey Hall and the student union, injuring five and killing three others. The notices were filed on behalf of Nate Statley, who can't walk, and Troy Forbush, who, according to the notice, pleaded for his life with the gunman and shouted, I don't want to die. Classrooms in Berkey Hall did not have locks on them, just like at least 1,300 other classrooms across campus. Our doors were wide open for anyone to enter if they so choose. Filing of court notices are required under state law and allow Michigan State time to investigate this before a lawsuit can be filed. One way the university says it's improving campus safety is by installing locks on classroom doors so they can be locked from the inside. The FBI is asking for your help after a gymnastics photographer is charged with child pornography. David Yellen is a freelance photographer who has worked with several gymnastics academies in Michigan. Investigators found child porn files and at least 500 images on his computer and hard drive at his Royal Oak home. Yellen also admitted to taking photos of children's feet during gymnastics events. The FBI has now created a website for the public to give information on Yellen and you you can find the link on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. We are working to learn what charges two teenagers will face after Detroit police say the pair attacked an off-duty officer. Surveillance from Saturday at the BP at Joy Road and the Southfield Freeway shows one guy reached for the officer's gun, which starts a wrestling match with the officer. Police say the two suspects both are underage and they turned themselves into officers Monday afternoon. Chief White says the attack will not change how policing is done in the city. It's unjustifiable, it's illogical, uh, and these two young men made a horrible decision. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to police these streets constitutionally. Uh, anybody that violates the law, you know, we've been very clear about it. We're not going to apologize for locking folks up that are carrying guns and hurting folks, and, 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 and our officers do an amazing job at doing that. Police say they have not found the gun. One of the suspects was seen holding in the video here as he runs out of the store. The motive for the attack still unknown. <laughs> Detroit's EMS operation needs some emergency help of its own. Just ahead, the urgent arrangement now in place to make sure patients get the help they need. And for the Gross Point School District, there are no easy answers. There will be program cutbacks. There will be teacher layoffs. The only question is how many.
Hit him with the horns, Tony. Nasir Patterson celebrating a birthday today, turning three. Johan Durr, also a birthday. Isaiah Green, Emerson Frazier, Aubrey Cresbaugh, and Kendall Levant. Happy birthday. Also celebrating today, Tracy Gibson and also Kiyu Chambers, Leah Robinson, Steve Rose, Melissa O'Sullivan, Chiquita Hubert Simmons. Happy birthday to all of you. Robin Cawson, Eric Minus, Pamela Kroll, Stephen Dildine, Shirley Logan and Billy Mitchell turning 68 today. And continuing with our birthdays this morning, Michael Arnold, Jacqueline Elam, Joan Anderson, and Kavznoski, Elizabeth Savage, Erlene Springer, and Michael Turner. Happy birthday. A couple of milestones here. Xavier White is turning 21 today. Dorothy Patsky, 60. Esperanza Jordan, 70 years old today, as well as Preston Lorick. Happy birthday. And a happy anniversary going out to Frank and Jerry Smith, celebrating their 31st anniversary and a happy 64th anniversary to Eugene Ooh. and Mary Jo Masso. Congratulations.